Hello, listeners, and welcome to this special edition of AUSA's Army Matters podcast. My name is Mark Holland, and I am the Director of Government Affairs for AUSA. Today, we are honored to be with Mr. Jonathan Moak, the Principal Deputy to the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Financial Management and Comptroller, and also with Lieutenant General Thomas Horland, the Army's Comptroller and Military Deputy to the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Financial Management and Comptroller. Gentlemen, welcome. What a pleasure and honor it is for AUSA to have this opportunity to meet with you virtually and to discuss a very important and transformational topic for the Army, the Army's Finance Strategy 2026. To me, the transformation that's taking place in the United States Army, regular Guard and Reserve, is just amazing. Under then Army Secretary Esper and then Chief of Staff Joe Milley, the Army began rebuilding readiness and refocusing modernization. The Army also established meaningful reform initiatives to get the most of every taxpayer dollar for national security. And General Horlander, when we met for our podcast in February to highlight the Army's fiscal year 2021 budget request, you explained for us how the Army Financial Management and Comptroller team is leading an important reform initiative of your own that is saving many millions, if not billions of dollars through better management of de-obligated funds. Now, under the leadership of Army Secretary McCarthy and Chief of Staff Jerome McConville, the Army is renewing the priority for people through putting soldiers, families, civilians, and soldiers for life first. Thus, Army Finance Strategy 2026 seems to be totally timely and fit right in with these other top Army priorities and transformation initiatives. And I note, you both have extensive experience developing transformational strategies and leading change in order for organizations to add greater value to the overarching mission. So Mr. Moak, sir, to begin our discussion, would you please tell us a little bit about what Army Finance Strategy 2026 is and how it came about? Sure, Mark, first of all, thank you for having us. The transformation of the Army Finance Function is a very exciting topic for me, and I'm really glad to be able to discuss it here with you and your audience. So let me start by saying that I come from the consulting industry. And I started here last October, so I've been here almost a year now. And so I came in with an idea that I wanted to do an organizational assessment of FMNC and try to understand the pain points and the things that we could do to accelerate a transformation. So I started meeting with everyone here in the organization, provided me the insights that I needed to develop a robust and comprehensive strategy. So I learned pretty quickly that to improve the effectiveness of an Army FM financial management transformation and modernization strategy, we would need campaigns and lines of effort, and that those efforts must support an overall FM strategy, and they should be managed in a way that would foster alignment, integration, and transparency via a cross-cutting governance body that will coordinate stakeholder management and adjudication of key decisions. There was a couple of issues that kind of came to light pretty quickly. Our current and upcoming financial management priority campaign plans, which I'll explain later in this podcast, around ERP modernization, our Army resource cloud, financial improvement, and workforce development are all at risk of working in silos as each develops and executes their plans, makes decisions, and communicates change with a degree of independence, creating the potential for misaligned or divergent efforts that could diminish the overall impact of the work being done. So to sort of peel back the onion and and have people understand that we needed a comprehensive strategy, I started to engage our leaders here. And I've said it many times since I've been appointed. If we don't transform, we run the risk of becoming obsolete in the future and not providing the value to Army senior leaders that they require. So we are currently engaged in the largest business transformation that the Army has ever seen. We're going to have to synchronize financial management operations and solve problems at the speed of relevance to be effective. To spark that transformation, we have to get back to our why, our vision and mission for the organization. We are uniquely charged with optimally resourcing the Army to fight and win our nation's wars. And we owe it to our soldiers, civilians, and the American taxpayer to provide the very best that we can. This is an enormous responsibility, and we don't take that lightly. So the intent of the Army Finance Strategy is to successfully integrate and align financial management operations within the Army's modernization campaign. This is a five-year strategy that establishes key goals to transform those operations by 2026 through the priority campaigns that I've talked about a little bit already that will enable the Army to operate at the speed of relevance. Essentially, 
Our goal is to fully realize the vision and mission of our organization by implementing lasting, sustainable solutions within financial management. This strategy is part of a fundamental shift in how we solve problems within a rapidly changing environment. Sir, thank you very much for explaining this important new strategy. And a question that came to mind while you described this strategy, and I sense your enthusiasm for the strategy's outcomes and sub-outcomes. Would you please explain the Army Finance Strategy's strategic framework that will enable success? Absolutely. So first of all, we have to transition from planning based on outdated methods to focusing on an adaptive problem-solving approach based on anticipating outcomes. We can all agree that we're operating in an information environment that is evolving very quickly, and we have to accelerate our efforts to meet those needs. This global pandemic has driven the speed of business to unprecedented levels, and the Army was already attempting to move from the industrial age to the information age, so now we must really be focused so that we're not left behind. Finance leaders and their organizations need to have a holistic and strategic view that also includes driving technology efforts and assisting with talent management. We're taking this into account as we look at how we transform ASA, FMNC, and the Army finance in general. I talk a lot about people processing technology, and I think you'll hear me say that a lot today. All three of those must be equally valued for successful transformations. In the private industry, the CFO partners with the CIO to drive business transformation that seeks to satisfy the ends that the CEO desires, especially as it relates to improving IT infrastructure. ASA, FMNC, is central to ensuring the right foundation is set with data-driven strategies. Army finance leaders that can present logical data that is timely and accurate for decision-making is more than just something nice to say. It is critical to remaining relevant in this business environment. That's essentially the why. I've just laid out the why. And now AFS 26 pulls together the how and what of financial management operations. We needed a proactive and unified approach with our strategic partners to govern these efforts. So we have three strategic goals, and they're all nested with the Army's priorities of modernization, readiness, and reform. The first goal, to provide optimal resource allocation to the U.S. Army. And this is centered on accelerating innovation. We're simplifying our business systems and interface environment, and we're incorporating feedback from our end users to gain their buy-in. We're also working with strategic partners within the areas of acquisition, logistics, and human resources so that we can collaborate on technology solutions that benefit all of us. To that end, we've stood up an enterprise business systems multifunctional capabilities team. They represent the key business domain areas, such as logistics, acquisition, and personnel, to collaborate on the development of a business system that will streamline existing platforms and meet the needs of each business mission area. The MFCT is co-chaired by myself and General Ed Daly, the CG of Army Materiel Command. The Undersecretary of the Army likes the civilian and military team that we have created to ensure that there are no holes in our swing. This team also seeks to strengthen the bond of the FM and log communities, which see the whole supply chain from budget formulation to the sustainment of activities that create maximum effects on the battlefield so that those can be realized. The EBS MFCT leverages distributed team members in a matrix faction from across the entire Army with major centers of gravity in the National Capital Region, down at Redstone Arsenal, up at Aberdeen Proving Ground, and at Fort Lee. The next strategic goal is to empower our soldiers and civilians with the right tools and training. The future of Army finance is about promoting the workforce to engage in higher level problem solving that translates into more efficient and effective resourcing. So we must develop our current workforce. We must attract and retain the right talent and then promote a culture of performance within that unified group. Final strategic goal is to achieve sustainable auditability. What I want to emphasize here is that auditability, to me, is simply the byproduct of accountability. How well we manage our repeatable business processes will lend itself to accomplishing a clean audit opinion. It takes all three parts of people, process, and technology to do. To move forward with our plan to achieve full auditability, we need to have business systems that we can pull accurate data from and that can provide real-time information on the obligations and execution of funds. An optimized technology-enabled business environment is critical. Coupled with the system, we need innovative solutions for automating manual processes by freeing up our analyst time to seek the root cause issues that will resolve existing errors and other issues. Streamlining our ERP platforms will improve our auditability as we improve our data. We must also look at our processes and re-engineer them to be successful. Business process redesign is foundational to any transformation effort. Finding more efficient ways of doing business is critical, 
and we must align them to commercial best practices as much as practicable. The strategic objectives identified within the plan support the three strategic goals and create executable milestones for the current priority campaigns. Under this strategy, we can create as many priority campaigns as we see the need for and as required to achieve our goals. As such, we currently have four priority campaigns. I touched on them lightly earlier. Enterprise resource planning modernization, advancing the Army's resource cloud, financial improvement to support the audit, and developing our workforce to support these operational shifts. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for going through the strategic framework with us. The way you described and connected mission with goals, with objectives, and with priority Army financial management campaigns was very helpful to understand the overall strategic framework of the finance strategy. And General Horlander, sir, I know you began your Army career as a field artillery officer, and now you are the Army's senior finance and comptroller general officer. So how do you foresee the Army's finance strategy 2026 supporting our warfighting units at Forces Command? Then also, how will the strategy support other major commands, such as Army Material Command, the Training and Doctrine Command, and Army Futures Command? So, Mark, good afternoon to you and the AUSA team. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So if this, think about this for a moment. This is a strategy that is going to integrate and optimize our business processes, our systems that we have, the talent of our workforce, the IT and network, our material solutions, the data that's available. And if you think about it, when you take all of those components of this domain and you integrate them, you inevitably optimize our capability so that we can provide a greater analytical capability that informs our decision makers. So in its most simplest form, I would tell you, this strategy will give the decision makers and the leaders of the United States Army a much greater capability, a capability that will enable them to make some better resource-informed decisions. And so I think everybody appreciates we've got some tough times ahead in terms of the federal budget and the defense budget and making some very hard decisions. And especially all of those commands that you mentioned, Forces Command, AMC, TRADOC, and the Army Futures Command, all of those leaders that are out there, they are charged with trying to balance readiness in strength and the talent of their workforce and the modernization of the Army. This strategy, fully realized, will enable them to do that because at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to protect the national security interests of the United States of America and to support the national defense strategy. We can't do that unless we enable ourselves to make some very well-informed, resource-informed decisions in, in the process of doing so, being better stewards of the taxpayers' resources and taking care of our soldiers, families, and civilians. So this strategy, fully realized, will enable us to do that, along with many other things, of course, but this is certainly one of them is optimizing our ability to resource the United States Army. Thank you, sir. It is perhaps easy to incorrectly view the Army's management functions, such as Army Financial Management Comptroller, as stovepipe organizations operating within themselves. But as you described it, the Army's Finance Strategy 2026 clearly supports the entire Army and will enable more informed analysis for better decision-making at many levels within the Army. And now back to Mr. Moak, sir. The framework for the strategy is guided by what you describe as five pillars of acceleration. Would you please describe these pillars and how they support growth for the finance and comptroller field? Well, absolutely. Look, the Army is first and foremost a people-driven business. And for any successful organization, it's important to create a strategic framework that supports the workforce and encourages their participation and feedback. The five pillars for acceleration were designed to make an organization stronger and to foster collaboration and trust. The five pillars are essentially our organizational change management strategy that will accelerate our desired outcomes. It's what holds up the entire framework for AFS 26. The five pillars create the necessary buy-in from our workforce and gives them a voice during this transformation. I call them the five pillars for acceleration because if we keep them in mind and use them as our guide for our actions, then we will significantly increase our likelihood for success and accelerate the implementation of AFS 26. You know, in general, mature organizations have a tendency to build silos over time. This prevents teams from sharing critical information that will help accomplish the mission, and oftentimes it actually impedes our ability to achieve lasting success. ASA FMNC was certainly not immune to that. 
Positions were created and functionally removed from their main purpose within the organization. And over time, that's created a sub-optimized business environment. We also weren't working with those strategic partners as well as we could have been. Our communication, both internally and externally, degraded over time, and we wanted to align our culture from the top. The workforce honestly needed to be upskilled to maintain pace with the speed of business. And in many cases, they needed to be reskilled because technology was changing so rapidly. It was hard to keep up. There was a need to build our bench within ASAFMNC with external talent. You know, we have professionals retiring faster than we can transfer their knowledge and hire backfills. Through those challenges, our organization's ability to innovate, which is critical for transformation, was stunted. Our professionals are among the best in the entire United States Army, and they were oftentimes feeling like they were running just to fall behind. There was no time to transform. So with this, we're creating the space required for them to start to think about the bigger problems. The pillars enhance communication, develop the workforce, assess and align culture, inspire innovation, and build the bench. The first pillar, enhanced communication, is critical to the success of any organization. Communication builds trust, and that's foundational. We've definitely strengthened internal communication, and we've eroded silos in a short amount of time. Over-communicating during the pandemic has been crucial. We have turned to focus on how to externally communicate now. We're trying to get our compelling message out, and we look to our strategic partners, such as here at AUSA, for which we are very grateful, to help us with that. Our shared vision to develop the workforce is to seamlessly blend the civilian and military workforce, to fully train and empower them to meet the current and future requirements of this transformation and the future needs of the Army, to inspire innovation, which we need for our transformation efforts. We're cultivating an environment that encourages freedom of thought and outside-of-the-box thinking. Similar to the thought leaders who influence private industry, we embrace failing forward and accepting certain risks in order to move forward more quickly. Creating an environment where it's okay to learn quickly and then reassess our direction is critical. The implied task to assess and align culture was to better articulate our strategic intent and our core values. We are always welcoming feedback and looking at ways to be more inclusive. Again, this gets to the heart of fostering trust within our workforce. And finally, to build our bench, we're looking for the right people with the right skills, doing the right jobs at the right time. We want to improve our talent management and build diverse teams because diverse teams bring the best solution. Diversity of thought, background, and skills add value to any organization. Excellent, sir. As you describe the five pillars, I clearly understand how well they relate to and support Joe McConville's People First strategy. And gentlemen, I understand the core of this strategy is driven by workforce development for both soldiers and civilians. Lieutenant General Horlander, sir, would you please describe the recent transformation that's taken place within Army Finance and the future workforce developments we can expect to see? Sure. So we are in year three of the finance and comptroller professions transformation. But more importantly, what I want to make sure everybody takes away from this is that we're transforming not for the benefit of the profession. We are transforming for the benefit of the United States Army and for our commanders and our leaders out there that need a better quality of service and support from the finance and comptroller professionals that serve in their formations. And so what we have done is we have reorganized ourselves around eight core competencies. Four of these core competencies previously existed. Those were funding the force, much what comptrollers do, accounting, dispersing, and soldier pay. But there are absolutely other competencies that commanders out in the field need from their finance and comptroller professionals. The first one I will tell you is fiscal stewardship and being able to optimize the value of the funding that is provided at the tactical level is absolutely a necessity and a competency that we ought to be able to provide to the commander at Echelon. The second one is big data analytics. I think this is important for every profession in the United States Army, but certainly in the finance and comptroller profession, to be able to conduct big data analytics and to turn data into uh, relevant and timely information. There is a move afoot to provide a counter threat finance capability in the formations to our commanders. This really allows a commander to see the battle space and his fiscal environment through a fiscal lens and to be able to see the finances of his peer competitors. 
which is really important to look at your competitors through a different lens than what you traditionally have done. And the last one, of course, is to provide all of our soldiers in our profession with some audit capabilities so that they can help lead and advise the commander on becoming audit ready. So those are the eight competencies. We've reorganized ourselves around those in the formations, specifically in the financial operations formations and going back to company, battalion, and a brigade level organizations throughout the Army. So a lot of goodness there. That move is afoot right now with a force design update that has just recently been approved. There are other things we've done. So we've established a financing comptroller senior sergeant major for the entire profession. He is really doing a wonderful job with the talent management of the non-commissioned officer corps. And running parallel with that are the enhanced roles that we are having our non-commissioned officers play throughout the formation. So this is, like I said, we're in the third year of this. We're making some great strides. And I think we're going to really see here in the next couple of years a much greater capability and a much better level of support to the commanders out in the field and the leaders who who count on us so much to optimize their purchasing power. Thank you, Chairman Horlander, for providing these updates. It seems like an exciting time to be part of the finance and comptroller profession. And Mr. Moak, would you please describe the workforce transformation for civilians? How will this influence training and education within the civilian career field? Absolutely. Developing the workforce has been a priority for our organization as one of the five pillars for acceleration. Our goal is to cultivate an environment where soldiers and civilians feel motivated and empowered to shape the future of the Army financial management and comptroller field. The FMNC workforce has a unique opportunity to lead the charge for this and the Army's business transformation by acquiring skills that are in line with private industry. So that's why we've engaged in a new partnership with the University of Virginia and the Darden School of Business, the School of Data Science, and also the McIntyre School of Commerce. We're gonna be hosting a three-day pilot program covering business analytics, leadership, strategy, and innovation. The program's gonna launch next month in Arlington, Virginia at the UVA Darden Sands Family Grounds. We knew that business analytics is a growing field and that our civilians had not had the chance to learn those skills. So we're hopeful this new partnership will close that gap for us. I'm very excited about it. Another way we are doing this is by deploying automations built by our robotics process automation team. These RPAs will free our finance workforce from redundant labor-intensive tasks and allows them to focus on more meaningful analysis. FMNC is also working with the Army's Civilian Senior Leader Management Office to take a more holistic approach for talent management for our senior executives, with the goal being to ensure each SES obtains a broad experience across financial operations and comptrollership. This holistic approach will be applied downward to the GS staff, and it's in full alignment with Lieutenant General Horlander's vision for the Finance and Comptroller Branch for the military. It's pretty exciting to be on the same page with someone that you've worked with for less than a year. We're both charging hard to create improvement and momentum with that next group of leaders so they can carry that forward. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, you both have significant experience through prior assignments with change management and leveraging information technology to better enable mission accomplishment. Would you please discuss with us how the Army Finance Strategy 2026 will leverage artificial intelligence and data analytics? I note you both covered this a little bit already, but to gain efficiencies and remove soldiers and civilians from performing the more mundane tasks, performing more analysis and making recommendations that are data and metrics based for better decision making. Sure, look, the Army has existing data science and analytics platforms such as Vantage, and we have a lot of tools that are available through the cloud. We have data science teams and the workforce are experimenting with those tools to generate more efficient outcomes, such as a more accurate balance sheet and assigning correct codes for contracts. That's gonna lead to better data for decision-making. FMNC is working with the Army Futures Command to invest and test use cases on data science platforms and software to phase out legacy applications. Also, FMNC is working with the DOD Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, Jake, to find and utilize industry best practices for AI technology that will help productivity in the workforce. FMNC, as I've stated earlier, we've already started to implement RPA capabilities. We're constantly looking for ways to increase our efficiency by experimenting with machine learning to make our RPA implementation even more powerful and productive. Lastly, another step we've taken is to inject technology outcomes in FMNC 
by hiring a highly qualified expert who serves as our senior data scientist here in FMNC. He's already making an impact. He's identifying duplicative and incorrectly formed asset serial numbers on the Army balance sheet. These duplicative ghost assets have second order negative effects into the Army's ability to manage its supply chain and logistics costs. It's really remarkable work that he's performing in a very short period of time. Sir, so thank you very much for explaining the important role of information technology to the Army finance strategy and how artificial intelligence and data analytics can be and will be used to improve capability. This seems very exciting and very interesting. Sir, so developing and implementing the Army finance strategy, though, cannot be a short and simple task. Would you please tell us a little bit about the strategy's framework for implementation and the timeline or sequence of events for implementation? Yep. The strategic objectives apply across those priority campaigns to manage and coordinate efforts to support AFS 26-3 strategic goals. The strategic objectives cross over the applicable campaigns to illustrate where collaboration of activities is necessary to support the strategic outcomes. We're currently in the process of embedding AFS 26 into the existing Army governance structures so that we can operationalize the strategic plan and achieve the AFS 26 mission. Part of that process is the socialization of AFS 26 to stakeholders in and out of the Army FM community to promote stakeholder understanding and participation, as well as supporting development of the implementation plan to deliver an actionable approach that has the alignment of leadership. Thank you, sir, for reviewing the timeline. And with regard to the Congress, for General Horlander, sir, as you've met with the Defense Committee professional staffs and with member staffers in the House and Senate, any feedback from them with regards to the finance strategy and overall financial management improvements that you can share with us? Sure. First, let me just tell you, so this is, I think, about my 13th or 14th year working in the Pentagon, my 10th year this time around. And I think it's good to tell everyone, this is probably the most incredibly active congressional engagement agenda I've ever seen in all the years that I've been serving here in the Pentagon. I attribute that to the leadership of the secretary and the chief and all of the other Army senior leaders on down. So that in and of itself is an amazing accomplishment. A lot of activity, a lot of dialogue, specifically with our committees of jurisdiction, those being the Senate Armed Services Committee, the House Armed Services Committee, the Senate Appropriations Committee for Defense and MILCON, and the House Appropriations Committee for Defense and MILCON. So an absolutely very robust agenda. And what's important about that is it's not just myself or some of the finance and comptroller professionals that talk to them. But it's actually the Army senior leaders from the secretary and the chief on down to the undersecretary and the vice chief of staff. So we're hitting them on all cylinders. I'd also tell you that it is scheduled on a monthly basis where our appropriation sponsors spend time up on the Hill and talk to the different staffers of the committees as well. So whether it's a Colonel Drew Hyatt and uh, Todd Nethery talking to them on a monthly basis about O&M and the things we're doing in our operation and maintenance accounts, or Ms. Valerie Alexander on a monthly basis walking them through all the things we do to optimize and do the best job that we can with our MILPERS account, or Kirsten Taylor who manages all of our research development and acquisition accounts. These professionals are in dialogue on a weekly basis or if not a monthly basis with all of the staffers over there. And I think as I talked to you before about this several months ago, the other enterprise level program that we have is known as CARE. So that is the Command Accountability and Execution Review. And at the enterprise level, that is really led by the Undersecretary of the Army and the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. I'm the lead for that at the general officer level. But it's really the Army senior leaders who have taken that program to the heights that they have. In, in fact, has really manifested itself in the Congress, I think, having a better level of confidence in how we manage our own m accounts across the force. Very impressive and comprehensive, too. So, Mr. Moke and Lieutenant General Horlander, congratulations. You and your financial management comptroller team have clearly worked very hard to continue to improve financial management within the Army and to implement Army Finance Strategy 2026. Gentlemen, this has been a very helpful and informative discussion to learn about Army Finance Strategy 2026 and the financial management improvements that are being made.
Thank you so very much for joining us today for this important discussion. So as we conclude, what closing remarks or comments do you wish to make for our listeners? First of all, thanks for having us. This is a great opportunity today and really appreciate you taking the time to do this and helping us get our message out. And secondly, I would tell you, it's really great to be able to partner with someone who has such a great vision for what the future of our profession should look like and what it should be able to do. And that's, of course, Mr. Moak. So that's really good. I think we're on a very good azimuth right now, both with the Army Finance Strategy 26 and the transformation of the finance and comptroller military profession. And when this is all done, I would tell you, I think we're going to be able to ensure that everything that the Army does, at least from a financial perspective, is well nested with the national defense strategy and the country's national security interests. So where I think we're moving in the right direction, and I think by 2026, this is going to be a much more optimized operation. Thank you, General Horlander. I appreciate that. Mark, and to everyone at AUSA, I just want to emphasize how much of a pleasure it's been to talk with you here today and how proud I am to be a leader in this organization at such a pivotal time. You know, Secretary McCarthy put it this way. He says, some people resist change because they focus on what they're going to lose instead of what they're going to gain. We are solely focused on what we can gain here, and it's really making a difference. AFS 26 shapes operations for a sustainable future as it directs us to modernize business systems, refine our business processes, and promote our workforce. So we're going to position ASAFMNC well for a transformation that optimizes our Army resources and it keeps our organization relevant in the information age. Lastly, I want to echo General Horlander's appreciation. I want to say I thank you, General Horlander. You know, he really is the best partner I could have asked for here in the front office at ASAFMNC. He's the best colleague here to me, and we're really making some good change. It's a real honor to get to work here, as I said, for which I'm grateful. We're doing big things together for the Army Finance and Comptroller profession. Thank you. Well, Mr. Moak and General Horlander, again, thank you very much for joining us today to discuss the Army Finance Strategy 2026. We at AUSA wish you and the Army the very best for a smooth and totally successful implementation of the strategy. And we at AUSA will do all we can to support you, the United States Army, and the Army Finance Strategy. Thank you both very much. To all our listeners, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Army Matters podcast on iTunes and everywhere podcasts are found. Join us next Monday with a brand new episode of Army Matters with Army Real Talk. The Army Matters podcast series is brought to you by the Association of the United States Army, the U.S. Army's professional association, member supported, Army connected. Visit us at AUSA.org for more information or to become a member. Your membership helps AUSA continue to carry out its mission to educate, inform, and connect with the total Army our industry partners, and our supporters of a strong national defense. For questions or to provide topic recommendations, email us at podcast at AUSA.org. Have a great Army Day. Hua.